Welcome back to another episode of the Massacre series. Credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing the series. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the Deck Tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck, and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card, and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, guys, we are back with another episode. I'm so excited for this episode. We actually ended on a pretty good winning streak last episode. Uh, this is, I believe, going to be like the 98th or 99th, probably 98th, uh, 98th episode we've ever had, which is, wow, I can't even believe we've gotten this far. And uh, probably the 100th one, we got to do something special. I haven't planned out yet, but before we even get there, we ended on a winning streak last episode, but our packs were dog shit like literally dog shit. Like, our best pull i think of the whole day i'm not even joking if there's a megalo smasher axe that's that's saying a lot it was some of the worst pulls we've ever had uh it, it seems to me like konami's been like plotting against this lately it, it's like we pulled two fire barrier statues 10 pie comes out fire king snake eye followed by uh, these pulls are out i watch other shows i swear to you people pull good stuff out of master packs it just doesn't happen to be us but this is what we're on right now actually have really been kind of liking this deck we've had to rebuild the deck because the problem is the fire barrier statue legitimately is kind of ass right now like i, I as good as it is against most decks right now if we go against tempai and we have the fire barrier statue it's like fire barrier statue moon mirror shield we literally just lose the game so we're better off just trying to get better with other variations of negates and interruptions and stuff like that. We, we have to do this. We have to interrupt their plays and, and play like this. So we're going to keep trying to play this deck. It really wasn't even performing badly last episode. Uh, the extra deck is pretty good. I just have to kind of focus on some of the newer stuff like the Nibir's Little Sister and stuff like that. Let's get to a couple of games. I'm very excited. Okay, so here we are. We're in Platinum 4. Also, I got to say we have... We're going to change our dex cosmetics, but you guys got to let me know which cosmetics you want. I will be changing the cosmetics to something, not changing the deck, but I'm going to be changing the cosmetics. Let me know in the comments what kind of cosmetics you want me to change it to, because I'm still not sure. There's a lot of there's a lot of variations we could do, so we'll see what we can do. All right, we lost the coin flip, but our opponent made us go first, so I'm going to, I'm going to guess that they're probably playing Tempai. They've got... Again, they made us go first, and we lost, so it's got to be Tempai or something. So we're going to go, I think, Buzzsaw Shark. Unfortunately, we draw Eternal Galaxy, but whatever, man. We got one brick in this entire deck. Sometimes you're going to draw it. Actually, technically speaking, the right-hand shark is kind of a brick, too. He didn't draw any hand traps, which is nice. Uh, we're going to be able to summon... Well, I can't say that yet. He didn't draw Ash that he used. That's, that's what we know. We don't know what else he's got. So we'll summon out Photon Galaxy... And then we'll activate this effect. It can't be destroyed by battle. And soon it will be unable to be destroyed by card effects too. So we'll detach, search, advance her just because it's free. Might as well to hand, yes. Unfortunately, we didn't have another free special summon. If we did, we could have done even more there. But there's no point to summon advancer right now. Our follow-up's actually really decent next turn. So now we just set, set, and set. And it's pretty decent. So I'm going to put chaining on. Yeah, I'm at, like I said, this is a pretty good follow-up. Like I said, I had to kind of cut the barrier statue because, unfortunately, the barrier statue, as good as it is, we have a little bit of a problem with it. Like, the the, the barrier statue is a really awesome card, uh, but it's just, in this metagame with Tenpai being as popular as it is, it's just not a fantastic card. Does he have Max E? Draw, did he just draw a Max E for a turn? I think he did actually draw a Max E for a turn. Wow. That's like shocking. I can't even. Okay, I I can't even say anything. Wow. What a random snipe. That was a crazy ass random snipe. That's just like I can't even. I'm in a little bit of disbelief. That's. <laughs> and that was actually a really great. That was that was one of our only interruptions, realistically speaking, because we have this, this, and then that. That was our big interruption, actually, is the torrential tribute. 
that's that's a crazy card to just hit us with there because this can't be destroyed by card effects so torrential would have been really awesome right now but the, wow i i how do you respond to that melodious did the new melodious stuff come out yes did it i don't see the new melodious stuff no it didn't come out yeah go ahead by all means yeah i don't think the new stuff came out first moment solo yeah did the fusion stuff the new fusion stuff come out i, I could have sworn it didn't my my did i miss something did i because the new stuff is good but like this stuff eh. and so i mean it's okay it's you know it, it, this deck is okay it's a, the old version of this deck is a bunch of floodgates to be quite honest with you well, special summon melodious monsters cannot be targeted by card effects or destroyed by by this is what i'm talking about see they have like a bunch of like uh they have a bunch of effects that are just yeah like floodgate effects on on the mod like protection floodgate effects type of situation if you control a melodious special summon this all fairies gain 500 you can target a melodious monster in your graveyard he doesn't have any Fusion summon once per turn. Fusion summon a melodious monster from your extra deck. He's gonna link into the link to melodious probably. Yep. And this prevents targeting and destruction by battle. Discard one card. Special summon two melodious. That is too good. I'm gonna let him discard. That's for sure. I have to negate this. That is actually too good. Uh, what other effects does this thing have? Melodious monster attacks. Your opponent can activate cards until the end of the damage step. I, I'm going to negate this with something. I think it's better to do the number 90 right now. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to negate with the number 90. And I want to negate and destroy it. Yeah, I want to negate and destroy it, so I'm going to detach the galaxy. Because I don't want to... I, I want this off the board. I want that off the board. It can be destroyed. It just can't be destroyed by battle, so I want that. And if he has, like, Raigeki, for example, I could just chain and then put the Photon underneath to protect it. So I want that off the board, because to keep a Link Monster allows him to... It allows him too much advantage to keep that Link Monster. He's going to go end phase. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, I thank God they didn't come out with the new Melodious. That would have actually been a really tough... This would not have been an easy duel if they added this, if they added Melodious. We're going to Photon, Hand, nope, we don't need it in our hand. We'll just attach it underneath to have more negates later and bring our protection back. Cool. We have a really awesome follow-up too, like I said. So right now, Melodious monsters on the field cannot be targeted by card effects or destroyed by battle. While the special summon card is on the field. He, de he definitely special summoned it because it's in defense mode. Uh, so, all right, let's just start off with Photon Advancer. And this protects itself, so I'm going to actually have to waste the Negate on this. I'm going to have to waste the Forbidden Droplets on the Aria. So I'm going to Normal Summon this guy out. Activate its effect. Yep. Target itself, obviously. Uh, she's not useful right now, so we'll go with this. Activate Search. And what's awesome is we can actually... If we wanted to, we can actually use Forbidden Droplets to send this to the graveyard, but there's no point because I'd rather get the the free draw, because then whatever I draw, I can just send with Forbidden Droplets anyway. But unfortunately, I do have to use a Forbidden Droplets. I will probably put this back in the deck. It's the least useful card here. All right? Yeah, I think it's the least useful card here. Flip this to attack. This can't be destroyed by battle. St I just, let me just double check. It doesn't say other Melodious Monsters. While Special Summon... Melodious monsters you control cannot be targeted by card effects or destroyed by battle, so this can't be destroyed by battle. Uh, what do we need to send to the graveyard here? So, Solemn Warning, Necro Valley. Which one's the best against Melodious? Honestly, I don't even know which one's the best against Melodious. We could probably just... because we Do we want to go into a rank 4? An additional rank 4 after this? Because we can go into Time Thief. So, it's either Time Thief or just send one of these two boneheads to the graveyard. Okay, let's go to battle. We'll go to battle phase. Uh, we'll attack with this. Activate Forbidden Droplets. And we'll send... Honestly, I'll probably send Necro Valley to the graveyard right now. It, it, Necro Valley is decent against Melodious. It's nothing crazy. It's decent against Melodious. But I, I can probably send it away. It's not the end of the world. And then we just attack with everything else. It, it is a decent... The Link Monster is... is It's good against the Link Monster for sure. So we go main phase two. And now we set this. So if they activate the first solo, whatever, then we can just use that. And then we can go with Time Thief here. 
And then Time Thief can help us. I think Time Thief is probably better than Necro Valley in this situation, just because it can dodge around stuff. So we still have two interruptions plus Time Thief. So we'll see what we can do here. It's not bad. Really isn't a bad situation whatsoever. He's got two cards, and we've got three, and two of them are negates. Like, like honestly, pretty good. We can go... As long as we can match these two to cards, we're good. So we'll go... If we can get a trap off of this, then we're in really, really good shape. We get a spell? That's not bad. We got a Raigeki. It's really not bad. Uh, Raigeki would have done nothing against this board, because this can't be destroyed by card effects, and this dodges Raigeki anyway. So realistically... I, I wish he actually had drawn this Raigeki, because it would have been a guaranteed dead card. Right, he's going to set a monster. This is one of those guys that just doesn't give up. Which I respect, to be honest with you. I respect this, because a lot of people do just give up on these situations. So, end phase will activate both these effects. I've, I don't think I've ever like been able to utilize both of these cards at the same time. And, you know, it's funny too, I could have just activated... I could have just added the Photon to hand, and then I would have just sent for Forbidden Droplets. I also will activate this. But I will only be sending, I will only be drawing. So I just detach this, nothing else. Not bad, I, really not bad actually. Condemned Witch is pretty cool. And then this, we can uh, attach, yeah I think we'll just attach this to hand. Nope, we'll just attach it underneath. Because again, I can't summon it, that card can't be normal summoned or anything like that. Buzzsaw Shark, uh, I can't summon anything with Buzzsaw Shark, but he's 1600 attack. 1600 attack is obviously better than a weaker amount of attack another actually i would have wanted him to draw this because it's really high level he wouldn't have been able to do anything with it all right so i guess we just uh <laughs> do we play around a flip effect i don't think there's any flip of flip effect melodious cards i don't think so but he might have another one that can't be destroyed by battle in some weird way yeah, I think we just summon the Buzzstar Shark. Worst case scenario, next turn. That way we can do whatever we need to. So, if I do the math right, then we get a spell card monster. Okay, so if I do the math right, we attack with this, and then these two will clean up the game if this is enough attack. It's guaranteed. So we'll attack over that, and then this floats. Especially summon a Melodious Monster from your deck. I can actually negate that, right? Yep. Because it does negate the activation, even though it's in damage step. In damage step, you can't negate effects, but you can negate activations. So... As you can see, we couldn't activate to negate with Photon Lord, but we can activate Solemn Warning because Solemn Warning negates the activation of the card, but this guy only negates the effect of the card, so it's not possible to activate Photon Lord because he doesn't negate activations, but if he had, we would have been able to activate him. So I guess we, that did work out. I also could have just searched the Forbidden Chalice, but then it would have uh, the game would have went on for another turn. Two Legacy tickets, not bad. Okay, so this is what our opponent was playing. He actually is a little bit premature to it because this deck is really actually... It actually is a good deck. He's just a little bit early, honestly. Uh, the new support, I believe... it was Funny enough, I think it was leaked to drop and then it just didn't drop. So the new support is extraordinarily good and even pure, this deck is actually quite good now. So this is what he's playing. Uh, and now let's go open some packs. Okay, we are in Platinum 4, and as you remember, Platinum 4 and above, we open two packs from now on, because we did get to Diamond, and now we're trying to get to Master, which realistically is a much, much larger challenge overall, so let's go open two packs. Okay, let's open two Master packs. This is exhilarating. We've got already a pack that's glowing, which is, last episode we pulled one Super Air, and we pulled a ton of packs. So we've got Samorg, another chair. Okay, I, like I said before, if I pull... A bunch of sticks and chairs I can actually play. So scepters and chairs I can actually maybe play. Rex is an okay card maybe sometimes. Uh, Zeta, another one. I don't need another one. Snowman effect. I don't think I can really use this card in any way. Dino Wrestler. I don't think you can. Yeah, discard a dinosaur. Special summon this one. I, we do have a decent dinosaur package, but nothing too crazy. Tribute a dinosaur. Decent attack. Tribute a dinosaur. Target a dino wrestler in your graveyard. Special summon in defense. If I had a Prankatops, maybe. Uh, this guy's pretty okay. I mean, I just I can't really use him. And then we've got Coral and Enemy. This is unreal. We actually have this super rare. So, yeah, I don't know what's been going on. We've been pulling a lot of repeats. But now we got another one. Okay, so we got the chair. And we've got some other... Th this is actually a card we pulled on episode one, believe it or not. It's not a bad card at all. It's actually just good generic water stuff. But if we... I, I, we'd have to pull other water stuff to really make this usable but this is not a bad card and i don't even mind having a second copy of this 
we have a decent amount of just generic good water stuff we, we're missing like a few things to like put together a lot of masochists have kragen which is one of the best urs you can pull out of the the mass the legacy tickets but we have not pulled that if we pull that i can imagine maybe building a water deck of some kind all right now we open up another master pack and we'll see if we get anything out of this one hey i don't know what to to do let's see advanced crystal beast no no can you use this target effect monster punk controls negate its effects control a punk this is like an imperm basically yeah, this card's like Imperm in a certain sense. But honestly, we have other cards that are searchable that already do this. But this isn't terrible. Yeah, we have like like Forbidden Chalice. And Forbidden Chalice is so much more versatile. It's so much more versatile. It can give us attack. It can it can negate our, our cards, our opponent's cards. It can it can be activated during our turn. Like like honestly, we we have Forbidden Chalice and we have Forbidden Droplets, but Forbidden Chalice we have that we can activate any given time and, and we only play one of that and we have multiple copies so i think objectively speaking i think forbidden chalice is legitimately just better in every way than this card so there's no real point to play it uh chlamydia whatever uh we've got bone arch fiend okay that's not terrible actually this guy's not bad either but in a predator plant deck uh he's not great but we've got i mean he's not he's not bad in a plant in a pure pride of plant deck this guy's not bad but in our deck he's not that great uh we've got this guy is a decent card send one of the cards special summon from the graveyard it's a free summon but it's from graveyard and then we're locked into dark synchro monsters it's not a bad card we actually have pulled funny enough yeah, he's archfiend so that's that's kind of dumb yeah it's, it says archfiend but we've pulled some decent red dragon archfiend stuff but our payoff's not phenomenal, but that's a good card. Adhesion Trap Hole, Sangha of Thunder, Ancient Gear Castle. Fortunately, that's not Fortress, but we couldn't use Fortress or this card either way. All right, we just won the coin flip, actually. So overall, it's not looking too bad. This hand's pretty. This is actually our ideal hand. Now, they could have Harpy's Feather Duster or Maxi and kind of throw us off. He's playing a 60 card deck. That's always scary. 60 card decks are no joke so he's we're waiting for him he's got something but yeah our hand's not bad we have necro valley goes in solemn warning and this is we have this stuff to start that's really not bad so we'll activate this hopefully he doesn't have a maxi seems like he doesn't although he's taking a long time in the standby phase i don't know what was going on in that standby phase but we'll activate this and what's great about this card is he baits out hand traps on his own before we even get to the rank four plays which is nice so we'll go with all this stuff, activate, you know, do our usual stuff. This is literally our ideal hand. Like, no joke, this is as good of a hand as we're going to get. And as bad as a hand, you know, actually hands get much worse. But this is this is pretty ideal for hands. I'm probably going to keep this because that's an additional interruption. Zoror is a good follow-up, but this is an extra interruption, so we might as well keep it. And then, it's it, there's a chance he opens a Harpy's Feather Duster, but out of a 60-card deck... It's it's a lower chance than than usual, so we'll go with this. But we'll see what we can do. Photon Lord. We basically these two are basically like solemn. This is a solemn warning. This is actually like another solemn warning. They're very very similar effects. We'll activate the photon. We'll detach this just in case we have to use it at some point, and then we'll search out Galaxy to hand. And that's a pretty again. That's a pretty good hand. That is a pretty good follow up. That is a pretty good hand. Pretty good end board. Necro Valley. Definitely not what an opponent would ever imagine a deck could do. But that is... I Honestly, it looks pretty damn good. Hope you know, Fingers crossed he doesn't draw a Harpy's Feather Duster out of a 60 card deck. But if he doesn't that, draw that, he's going to draw something else. And what I mean by something else is... What's his name? Uh, by something else, I mean that other annoying dude. The grass looks greener or something like that. Also, I don't think this loses us anything. I might as well just activate the angel statue now. I might as well just summon that out. Because that's another inherent summon negate. So if he's playing like cash deer or something, I could just negate the inherent summon. That's not bad. So now we just put the chaining back. Also, what's also cool, this is a light. This is a light, and this is a light, and the card we search is also another light, and then we have Gozen. So we have three lights. 
He's going to night beam. I can't respond. I literally can't respond. Uh, hopefully he goes, yes. That's actually the one I wanted him to go to. Uh, that's fine. I can't respond with the card that he activated, but I couldn't respond anyway, so we lose the Solemn. That is 60 card deck. He opens night beam, but that's pretty... I it's, At least it's not a Harpy's Feather Duster. I'll lose that. I'll lose that. I don't care. That's fine. Like I said, depending on what deck he's playing against, goes in, puts a lot of work in. Like I said, we're following up with a light search, and we have a light on board. That's not bad. He could only he could only activate. It's actually a good thing that I uh, that I shotgun that other card, I guess. So now he summons out Warrior Digrepher. I'm very curious about what he's playing. 60 card deck, Night Beam, and Warrior Digrepher. I don't know what's going on right now. He sets a card. No battle phase. There, can, uh, this is an interesting game right now. Sometimes interesting is actually scarier. Than, than what you right if this was like snake eye or something then i could just wait for him to summon a dark moss or flip goes in match and then we win the duel this is the, the scary stuff believe it i'm more scared of watching something like this because i have no idea what that back row is who is this why is he here he's a dark though if this card attacks a defense position monster can make a second attack in a row okay we're gonna go ahead and goes in match right now because this is a dark this is an earth so he's gonna have to pick between one of the two and it looks like he could maybe make a rank 4 play, but we're going to stop that short before he can make that rank 4 play. And now he's stuck on this Warrior Digrepher. No way. That I didn't see coming. That I did not see coming. I'll say that. That I did not see coming. Thank God we're still higher in attack than him. Well, if this gets destroyed by battle, we get to destroy one of his monsters. Yeah. We get to destroy the card that destroyed it. So this is going to get destroyed. It'll trigger in graveyard. Activate. This card is actually really, really good in the in these like sealed kind of formats. This card has a bunch of really good effects on it. Plus it synergizes really well with Time Thief. But we only if only we had a way to like cheat it out and activate it on our turn. I never looked at this artwork really close. It's like an angel. I didn't even really. I know it said angel statue, but I never like saw what it what it looked like. But in a sealed format, this card is actually really phenomenal. Any scoops. I'm very curious about what he's playing. That was one of the funniest looking decks I've ever seen from the few cards that I saw. But he did not read that Angel Statue. And that Angel Statue did quite a bit of work. So we got three Legacy tickets. Awesome. All right, here's what our opponent was playing. I don't know what. Sometimes I wish I didn't draw Floodgates. Because if I didn't draw the Floodgates, we would have saw some interesting stuff. But he's playing a Floodgate. So he can't get mad at me. Why you would? I don't know why this is at 60 cards. I don't know what's going on here there is too much going on all right now we're playing it's like two o'clock in the morning which is actually one of the more ideal times to play you want to play at, at very odd hours because you get these kinds of opponents these kinds of opponents are the goats like who i don't know who, like like I, I want to meet this person in real life what does he do for a living who is this guy i don't know like what made him throw this deck together he could be a i don't think he's a masochist this is i, I think this is a little too specific for a masochist but it could be maybe it's 60 card masochist, but this looks very interesting. I, I, I honestly, I kind of love it. All right, let's open up some packs now. We've got a beautiful master pack that's going to rarity bump for us, but it might be a fake rarity bump because it's not a UR. Only the URs are guaranteed. So all those, this glowing could have been for nothing. Nope, it is for something. Spiral double agent. That is, that shit just came out. That card just came out recently. Wow. Okay. We can't use it, but it's it's cool to see. World Legacy, World Lands, Libromancer Realized, Norlanius, that's in a dragon deck, okay. G Golem, Link 1, what's this? Karakuri, almost got a Royal, Psych. Let's see what this is. We've got Bistia, Baldrake. Well, that's quite a card. That is quite a card to pull. Wow. That's a really good card. Okay, now we have two Bistials. We have a Bistial, we can search off of our other Bistial. That's a phenomenal pull. Damn, you contribute one other light or dark monster, target with special summon, and banish it. That is really, really good. If only we had Lair of Darkness, too. Yeah, that's really good. I'm, I can't be mad about that pull. Now, here's the thing. We actually cut... We cut Bistial... No, we didn't. Did I? I'm, I might be... I mean, let me go look at the deck. That might be an inclusion. That might be an inclusion. Let me go look at the deck, but that might be... Because that's good against too many decks. The only thing is, like, shit against Tempai, and Tempai's big right now. I know we're playing in the middle of the night, so we're not running into the real villains of the format right now, but that... This card can definitely go into a lot of decks. It's definitely a very good deck. 
Very good card, I should say. Okay, let's open another Master Pack. Since our goal is now Master, so I got a two Master Packs per win above Platinum 4. So let's see what this is. Familiar Possessed Asa, Cosmos, Sword Troopers. Got that, got that. Don't have that. We'll read it. Why not? I don't think I can really use this. And this is the Chronomaly card. I can't use that. Scrap Goblin and Rescue Hamster. Wow. Half old, half new. Rescue Hamster is quite a... Quite, this isn't a terrible card for a Pendulum deck, actually. I'm not even going to make fun of Rescue Hamster. You know what's crazy? We keep pulling all of these Familiar Possessed cards, but we, the ones we need are the little little animals so that we can special summon more stuff. That's what we actually need to pull is the little animals, and we never freaking pulled them. We pulled three of them, and then we never pulled them again. But yeah, we pulled an awesome. Okay, real quick, let's open these, these Legacy tickets. We might as well... I like to do a mid-episode. That way, if there's a change that I can make, I can make it mid-episode. It's not like one of those, like, oh, it's the end of the episode. What should I do? We've got Chthonian Soldier and two two anime cards. Chaz played one. Joey played the other. Let's see what these two are. Grenosaurus. or OG Grenosaurus, but we don't play level three monsters. And Sword Slasher. Not a, no, Grenosaurus isn't terrible. He's one of the first, like, Exceed monsters, I remember. That was, like, decent. Can't use either of those. We already have them and we don't use them. So that tells me we're probably not going to use those. Let's see what these are. We've got another code. Code Breaker Virus. We cut that from our deck. But he can make a return. He's not a bad card. If we draw more of that main deck monster, he could be even better. I don't think the shark is that decent. Target two fish in your graveyard. Shuffle those targets in the deck. I think this guy's artwork is actually kind of cool. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why he's got so many piercings. He looks fancy, but that's it's cool looking shark. But shuffling back those things in another space insulator. Not the worst pulls. Okay, let's look at this deck real quick. Am I playing? Yeah, just as I thought. I did yeah, I did cut it. I cut Bistial Druus Worm. And that Druus Worm. I cut the Bistial Magnum out of this deck. So the whole idea of this particular de deck that you're looking at right now, and the reason I'm not I'm not playing Magnumut or Ball Drake right now, because the whole point is to have all level four splash at plus ash, because it's ash. And it's generic and it's always going to be good. But the, the idea was to play all level 4s. Because sometimes we would summon a Bestial Magnumut. And it wouldn't accomplish anything. It would just kind of sit there. And it's like this 2500 monster that doesn't really do anything. Because we don't have... If we had a Chaos Angel, it would be a different conversation. Because we could just you know swap them out real quick. And like any of the lights, any of the darks into a Chaos Angel. But because we didn't, I cut the, the Magnumut, I remember. Because this is supposed to be like a pure rank 4. Like I said, we're actually doing quite well with this deck. So I think we'll just keep it the same for now. If we go on a losing streak, we're definitely making making major moves. But right now, we're actually doing quite well with this deck. Okay, our opponent once again made us go first, which is weird and scary, but I'll live with it. We got Needle Ceiling, Shathana, Penguin Squire, and the Endymion. Uh, funny enough, I think we can actually go... Into a variety of things here, actually. I think we can go into... Depending on we how we line up these columns, depending on what our opponent has, I hope they don't have a max C. If they don't have a max C, I think we can actually end on both number 90 and... And the Arisen. The Arisen. Ad Emancipator Dry Guy. I think we can actually end on both. Fingers crossed. Fingers very much crossed that they do not have... That they do not have what I just said, which would be, that would be a disaster, but we're going to activate, activate Shathana, for sure, so we're going to activate Shathana, we're going to summon it here, now I have to play this out right, okay, we're going to set this, we're not going to be able to use its draw effect, but that's fine, because we're going to be able to use Penguin Squire, I'm going to summon that, reduce it by one, change the level, yes, reduce it by one, cool, activate effect, Flip this. Okay, now this effects are negated, so I can't use these effects. I mean, I can to see if... Should I do that just to get him an imperm? Because it's not like... We're going to use monster effects anyway, so we might as well get this out of the way. So if he's going to imperm something, this would be the best time. No, he's, he, yeah, he does not have an imperm. Good, 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 good. All right, so now we can do a few different tricks here. Uh, it would suck if he had... I'm going to I'm gonna play it the full way, but now we can go into Dragite with these two. And do a few other things here. Yeah, I think this is actually one of the better hands that we've had. So we're going to go... Damn, they're both water. 
It doesn't matter who, but that's that's actually cool that they're both water. So we definitely have waters in grave. So we'll summon this here, Dragite. Set needle ceiling right here. Activate Tiamaton. Unfortunately, if we have, if they have Nibiru, we just kind of lose here, but that's fine. If, if they have Nibiru, I mean, it's not fine, but it's life, right? You can't complain about it. We played into the Nibiru, but I think this board is going to be better than our usual board, so playing into a Nibiru is not bad. In terms of, like, monsters that we summon, this is probably one of our best boards, so we've got to put another, just in case he has Call by Grave, we'll put another Water in the Graveyard. Search Eternal, the Galaxy Eternal thing to hand. Chaining on, set this. That's not bad, honestly. That is not bad. Now, we went a little minus on card advantage. We actually went significantly minus, I would say. We went minus... This is going to go away, so technically we went minus two. But, I mean, we go minus two to put two negates up. That's not it's not terrible, because the negates handle other cards. And then we've got Needle Sealing. Needle Sealing, unfortunately, does destroy the Risen. But... I think I'll just I'll just summon it here, so since it's the safest spot, and we definitely aren't going into another Tiamaton that we know for sure. But that's not that's not terrible, honestly. That's not terrible. We've got multiple points of interruption. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. And our opponent made us go first, so they're probably playing Tenpai. All these cards can come up against Tenpai. Okay, they're going to summon a Blaze Man. This is their normal summon. Activate to add a Polymerization. I actually probably do want to negate this. Yeah, because if this is their start, it's really... This is actually a really, 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 really bad... Adds Polymerization. And then I can negate Polymerization with the Risen. But I'd rather save the Polymerization for something else. I think I probably just negate this. No. How scared am I of Polymerizing? If this is his starter, that means his hand is not that great. Honestly. Because, like, what else is he going to have? He's going to have maybe the Vision, the Ferris, or whatever. Yeah, he's probably going to have, like, maybe he has, like, Ferris in hand. That's what he could have. That's what, am I scared of that? Am I scared of this? Like, what am I? I want to save this for a good spell card, so I'll probably negate this. I'll negate this. Do I want to negate and destroy? I think I do want to negate and destroy get this off the field during your main phase. Yeah, I just want to get this off the field. That way he has even more less things available in circulation. So we'll activate that. We'll see if he has any spell. If he has a mask change, actually, we just negate it with the Risen. Forbidden Droplets. I did not see that coming. Okay, I mean, I listen, man. I, there's nothing I could have done about that. Now it depends on if he discards a monster, and I can't respond with monsters now. If he discards two, that's going to be bad for us. And he's going to discard two. Yep, he's going to discard two. And I can't respond to that, unfortunately, because he discarded monsters. So both the Dragite and the... Both cards are unfortunately going to be negated. And I mean, the good thing is we have Needle Sealing. At least we have Needle Sealing to fall back on. But Needle Sealing is not the best card in this situation. That I will say. Needle Sealing is not the best card. Because he's going to add Polly. But Needle Sealing can destroy the board, but... He's going to have more follow-up than I am, for sure. He's playing heroes. I'm playing random stuff. So maybe we'll we'll wait for him to, like, stack up a lot of cards, and then we'll and then we'll do this. We might activate this effect, actually, now, so it stops bothering me about it. Or we just wait. He already wasted his normal summon, but if that gets fused away with, he's going to be able to draw and stuff. Yeah, there's, no, there's really nothing that I could have done differently, because no matter what I would have done... No matter what I would have done, the, it, the end result would have been the same because he had Forbidden Droplets. There's, there's, there's not a single change I could have made. I was going to fuse with those two. Probably into the, the, the Sunriser, if I had to guess. He's going to use the bubble, the new Bubble Man Liquid Soldier in Graveyard. Yeah, the result couldn't have been any different. There's nothing I... I don't think there's a single play I could have done differently. Because that's a hard counter to me, the to this board in particular, the droplets. This wasn't a bad board, though. I'm not even mad. Sometimes you lose. I'm like, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You can't really... Sometimes they have the out, sometimes you have the out. You, you can't really stress about it. Oh, he had Lightning Storm. Ah, he just drew it, probably. He just drew the Lightning Storm off of that. 
And then he's going to add Miracle Fusion off of him. See, if he summons Miracle off of Miracle Fusion, I could probably... He's going to summon this guy. Uh, instant Contact. So now it's going to be four monsters. He's going to summon a Neos, ignoring summoning conditions. So he's going to summon this, and he's negated. That's fine. I'm going to save the Needle Sealing until... There's more stuff on the board than I will. Yeah, until there's Miracle Fusion, then I'll Needle Sealing. I, the good thing about this card is it's not on Summon or anything like that. I can activate this any given time that I want to. I can activate this as soon as he enters Battle Phase. Like, I'm not... What I liked about this card is it doesn't force me to to do anything. Like, it's not like Torrential where it's like I, gotta, I have to feel... I, I don't have to feel like, oh, I'm on Summon. I have to do it now. It's like, I don't have to worry about, is my opponent going to keep Summoning? I, I, it's just, you just have to... Like, I know he's not going to link these two away, or most likely he won't link all of these monsters away. He's going to summon this dude out. He's going to add a favorite card. Alright, so he's going to do that. Favorite contact's really good. And then, unfortunately, this can destroy cards. He's going to set the favorite contact. Now, this is, this is where things get a little dangerous. We'll see what he does. So he's going to declare an attack. He can pop a card with the Sunriser. So he's going to declare. We'll see what he targets. B depending on what he targets is what direction I go. He's going to target that. The question is, do I activate it? Yeah, I think I do. I think I have to. I think I have to activate it. So we activate the Needle Ceiling. It will destroy my own cards, and that sucks, but I, I kind of have to. Otherwise... He gets over this, and then, yeah, I kind of have to. I might as well activate this, but it's, it's negated anyway, but it's going to keep bothering me if I don't activate, so I might as well activate it. Because we already activated monster effects in the main phase, it doesn't change anything. Yeah, so we activate this, it gets negated, cool. Then Needle Sealing will destroy everybody, and then Sunriser will destroy the... Needle sealing that was designated for graveyard anyway. I forgot what this contact card does. The miracle contact. Yeah, end phase. Okay, the contact. I got. I got to figure out what that card does. The best card for us to have drawn probably right now would have been a buzzsaw shark. That would have been the best thing. Fortunately, finish chain is not bad, but it's just not phenomenal either. Just gonna go straight to the end phase. Let me go see what this miracle contact is. It, it's. I remember it's a good card. It's the one that lets him cheat things out. By placing fusion materials mentioned the bottom of the deck in any order. Hand, field, or graveyard. So basically, he can summon this card if he wants to. Favor Contact's a crazy card. That's the one that lets him cheat out. One of those like really, really, really big monsters. The one that pops everything. Hero is a tough matchup. Not like It's not like outrageously tough. Because we have beaten it. But we've also lost to it. Like This is one of those matchups we're pretty even, honestly. I can't really be like, ah, oh, heroes, they're unfair. Like... They don't really run floodgates. They run a lot of board breakers, and I think that's that's where we usually lose the games against them is the board breakers. Because honestly, our hand wasn't bad, but they have they 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 trickle in a lot of going second cards, and this is negated, right? Yep, it's negated. There's no point for me to activate this. It's negated. Yeah, they trickle in their going second cards, and that's usually what gets us that gets us in big trouble is those going second cards, stuff like lightning storm, stuff like like evenly matched, stuff like the yeah, Lightning Storm evenly matched, Raigeki, all that stuff is, is the stuff that stops us typically. So he's going to activate the Favorite Contact. I do have the Fiendish Chain for whatever he does eventually summon. The cool thing about heroes for the most part is that they don't have a lot of outrageous protection effects. Other than, as far as I can remember, Malicious Bane, most of them don't have effects that are just like, okay, you can't target or block or this or this or that and that card. So that's actually kind of nice. This guy is just okay. I don't I don't really feel the need to. Yeah, Great Tornado is just okay. He's got a lot of attack, so that's a little annoying. But other than the attack that he's got, he's not really that broken. I don't even know what he just activated. He just drew cards. Oh, this crosskeeper. Okay. I was like, what did he do? The cool yeah, what I, like that's the cool thing about heroes. Like they're balanced. They're a very, very balanced deck. Maybe they're a little bit long in terms of how long they take to play but overall i think heroes have been pretty well balanced over the years nothing about them is outrageously broken and we're playing against somebody who's obviously just kind of playing like what i would describe as Jaden heroes which is just kind of heroes that he thinks are fun he's going to make the link two probably i sold i sold out of nowhere okay we have to i think we finished chain i sold 
Add a warrior monster. I think you fiendish chain this. I I don't know what's going on. I, I think you have to. This is a card. You see this. You have to. This is one of the greatest Link 2s ever printed. This is the Michael Jordan of Warriors. Technically, Caitlin Clark of Warriors, because you know it's a girl. It's two girls. Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese. But this is yeah, this is this card is a little too serious right now. I, mean, I can't not negate it. That that is that card is no joke. Miracle Fusion. Here we go. Here we go. I had to I had to finish chain this card out of respect. I, you won't hear me saying that a lot. Out of respect I I played in 2018. That this card was a one card FTK. And like 40 different ever like there's like three different decks going around where this was all and it was there was an FTK, there was a hand loop, and there was like two other things that all started with this one card. He's gonna make this infernal guy again. He loves this guy. He made him twice. He's gonna add a favor Kai. It's his favorite. Now he's adding a favor card. What a disaster. Yeah, hero, like I said, heroes can be can be an iffy matchup for us sometimes. Sometimes it can be a tough one. Because they have a lot of really strong cards, honestly. It's gonna set the favor contact before the battle phase, but I mean, it's whatever. It's we don't we have the only thing I can really think of drawing is like Buzzsaw Shark. That is probably the best card that we could draw. Because that's a one card Link 4. But there's probably other stuff that I'm not thinking of right now that we could probably draw and it would help. But I don't know. Like Gozen right now wouldn't be terrible. Because Gozen against heroes is like... It, 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 that, that'll that do a lot of damage. Form change. Not even mask change. Form change. I'm going to summon a masked hero at the same level. Original blah 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 blah. Form. This guy plays literally like one of every hero card. Tonight, I'm happy with who we're playing against. We're playing against some interesting decks. It's like everybody's like scared of Tempai, so they're like, I, I don't care what I'm playing, I'm going to go second with it. Okay, they're going to summon Ankyo. Yeah, it's effect damage, it's half, whatever. It destroys him most possible battle. Target a, Yeah, this is a weird one to summon Anki. Okay. Buzzsaw Shark is one card. There's other cards we could. Buzzsaw Shark. Okay. Okay. So we summon Buzzsaw Shark for sure. And we can make the monster we summon not be destroyed by card effect. We could clear a little bit of the board here. So whatever we summon, we'll just do this effect now before we eat too much of the time. We'll activate this, target itself. We'll see if we can even do it, because if he has Ash, we can't even do it. And we'll find out. If he has Ash, we just kind of lose. Yep, right hand shark. Summon that out. So now, this is when the conversation really changes. Do we make this, or do we make... Because whatever you make can be destroyed by battle, theoretically. It won't be to be able to be destroyed by battle. So we can make that, or we can make Time Thief, but Time Thief will just shuffle itself kind of away. We can also make the Sioux Ship, but then attack and then pop this maybe, or attack and pop this. Or we could just make this. I think this guy's probably, the Grenosaurus is probably the safest thing for us to make right now. Because he'll get over this, and then he'll go, his attack will be higher than Anki. And then on top of that, if he gets destroyed, then we get to pop something. So I think just overall, I think he's better that way. If he if this guy fuses into something even crazier, we at least have some kind of out. And then he himself cannot be... He's not the easiest card to out himself. So he can't be destroyed by battle. If he does out him by card destruction, we have something to do about that. So we'll go to battle phase. I Again, I might, you know, I might live to decide that that's not the right decision, but... In this situation, it's between this and Sioux Ship, so I don't think the it's it's that you, hindsight is always twenty twenty. So if I make a mistake, it's it's like okay, I made the mistake, I'll live with it. So now we can detach Buzzsaw Shark. Yeah, make sure. Yeah, Buzzsaw Shark, not right hand shark. Inflict the thousand. Go to thirty two. Go to end phase. Not bad. Can't be destroyed by battle. And pops a card. Not bad. Whereas the Sioux Ship would have just popped the card. Now we can go into something else, but we're at a decent amount of attack. I think if we attack again, I can safely detach. I can safely detach the right hand shark. What's cool too is when a dinosaur monster opponent, yeah, by battle, inflict a thousand. I can detach safely the second time because then he'll be at 42, and at 42, that's just a serious threat. He's gonna go e emergency call. The other thing is like if this guy played. 
I don't know, like, he's not playing a, a modern, like, a, oh, man, I didn't see that. Thank God we can't be destroyed by battle. I hope he enters the battle phase and we just, like, survive. Yep, he's gonna, not even in damage step, just do it now. So this has to destroy an opponent's monster by battle and send it to the graveyard in order to add a change card. But thankfully, we are going to survive this because we can't be destroyed by battle. No one ever reads. This is actually, honestly, though, it's not even his fault. This is one of the harder things to interact with in Yu-Gi-Oh! Which is when uh, a monster gain gives an additional effect. Like, on the bottom of this card, it should definitely say this card can't be destroyed by battle because of the effects of the right-hand shark. That's something they need to add to... to uh, that, that's something they need to add to Master. Because it honestly, even... I'm going to just, just to be completely transparent, I'm on the other side of this, but I actually do think it's a little unfair that he can't see the fact that my monster can't be destroyed by battle because he's reading this, it says nothing about it, and I'm gaining this additional effect from this card. So honestly, it is kind of unfair to him. So now he's attacking with this, I guess this go into a mask change card right now, which isn't a dumb thing because then he can swap out right now. But yeah, in all fairness, that actually is pretty unfair to my opponent. I can activate this to detach. To inflict a 1,000, I'll go to 42. Uh, do I want to do this now? Yeah, because I don't think he can summon anything. Like I said, I don't think he can summon anything that can, that can get over 42. That I highly doubt. I don't think this guy's getting over 42. Plus, I'm burning him for another, another stack. And then next turn, if he summons something, because this is going down in attack, as long as this guy stays in attack mode, and I can attack him, there's a potential for me to win here. If I just do any damage, and then the Grenosaurus dies, I win this duel, because the Grenosaurus can inflict another thousand on top of this. Grenosaurus has been putting in work. Grenosaurus has done more damage this, this duel than I think anybody else. Including this Anki. It's going to add a regular Neos. This guy's... Winning like Jaden or losing like Jaden? He's going to activate favorite contact, the favorite card. He's going to shuffle back the card in hand. So now he can go into a Neos card. That's dangerous. That is definitely dangerous. So he can go into a Neos card. But remember, we do have the Grenosaurus. Now the thing is, we don't have another Buzzsaw Shark, obviously. So we're not going to be able to go into anything else that's crazy. He's going to go into... This guy, he loves this guy. This is like his favorite card. He's going to add another favorite card. He absolutely, I've never seen somebody summon this guy as much as this guy. He keeps recycling him, summoning him. He absolutely loves this card. And he's going to set that trap card main phase two. He's going to set it and pass. This guy's going to go back down and attack. Now it all comes down to what we draw. It all comes down to what we draw. All right, end phase. This goes back down. It all comes down to... That's not bad. Against this deck, that's not bad. But it's, it's too bad. I can't, like... This isn't a continuous card, so I can't activate it immediately. So what we have to do is we just go to, go to battle phase as quick as possible. Then we gotta attack his Anki. Do some good, serious damage. If we survive this, he lets us go to end phase. I think we're in a decent situation. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. That might actually mean we lost this duel. Because now he can go into... If he goes into the guy that pops a bunch of cards, we're toast. Yep, he's going to fuse back Neos. That's not good at all. That is not good at all. Yep, Shining Neos. Yeah, I think we just lost this duel. Damn it. This game really close. This is a good game. I can't... Some games are just fun. Some games are good. They're fun games. I can't even be mad. I think the Grenosaurus was actually... Looking back... It is the right call. I think it was a better call than the Sioux ship. Sioux ship would have survived that attack, but we would have lost. We'll activate this. Again, I don't think we can possibly win this. Uh, we'll burn for another thousand. Oh, this can't be destroyed by card effect. Of course not. Something's protecting it. I don't know where. Cannot be destroyed by card effect. It doesn't. It literally doesn't matter that I did that. That's my fault, but it doesn't... Oh, shit. It actually mattered. It actually did matter. So we'll summon this in defense. Damn, it actually did matter. <laughs> that sucks. Okay, so it did matter. I sh obviously should have destroyed this card. This can't be destroyed by card effect. This will protect us for another turn. But it actually did matter that that happened. So we'll wait for him to commit a little more. And then we'll activate goes and match. Damn it, I didn't realize that was actually going to matter. Main phase one. 
If he commits another monster to the board, that would be perfect. No, he's not committing another monster to the board. He's going to declare an attack. This is where we activate the Ghost and Match directly. Alright, we have to activate this. I mean, it doesn't really make a difference if this guy can attack directly. Yeah, this doesn't matter. If he attacks directly, it doesn't matter. All he has to do is, yeah, just keep that. So I guess it didn't matter in the, in the long run. It, it did matter. I could have popped that card. Wow. Damn. Well, you live, you learn. It, it doesn't matter. We were still top decking, so there's no... There's, you don't know what, he's, what we were going to draw. Damn, I should have read that stupid Neos guy. That's my fault. Okay, we lost the coin flip, but our hand's pretty good. It's pretty decent. Our opponent's playing another 60-card deck. This is something we play against quite frequently. They usually open Grass Looks Greener whenever we play a 60-card deck. We never open the Ash. We have a higher chance of opening Ash than they do of playing of opening Grass Looks Greener. But somehow, it never works out. The Perform Pal Popper Upper, that card's decent. Wow, they're playing Dino Morphia 60-card. 4,000 damage, but they're playing Dino Morphia. Dino Morphia is a rough one, but we do have There Can Be Only One, Solemn, Crackdown, and Azure Statue, and Endymion. So our hand is really good, but they are playing Dino Morphia. Dino Morphia is never fun to play against. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're at. And they put the transaction roll back in grave. I don't care who you are. Dino Morphia is not an easy deck. Tier Limit. That came out of nowhere. Dragon Shrine. Druid. Ugh. Destrudo. Guess that pays more life points. Destrudo. Tier limit. Destrudo. It's like a flawless hand. <laughs> Look at this hand. The popper up. What are we milling now? Oh, he's going to copy, so he's going to be able to summon immediately into the Kentragena during the main phase. Yep. He's going to activate a Dinomorphia trap out of graveyard. I can't even imagine what's going on with this guy's deck. He's got three different engines going on in here. He's going to go into Rexrom bright and early. I don't know how these people do it. To have this many engines and not brick. These people are amazing. They really are. I don't think I can activate any of my monster effects, right? Nope. Just a monster. Well, if I had a monster that's 100 attack, then I could activate it. Like maybe Condem Condemned Witch. Yeah. You can pay life points. All monsters your point controls become equal to your life points. That would actually be a buff for the Condemned Witch. Yeah, I think we go with Condemn the Witch. I, I don't think you even... Yeah, we have 100 life points, buddy. Pay more life points, and then maybe you can negate Condemn the Witch. So that's not bad. That's not too bad. We have good stuff, though. We have a Crackdown and Azure Statue and, and all kinds of cards that can come in handy. He's got three cards, so we're up significantly in card advantage tier limit. Wow, he can, he's going to negate this with the tier. Does he have any Aqua Monsters in Graveyard to fuse with? I don't think he does. He's he's banking on the fact that this Rex, Rex room is going to carry the rest of the duel. He's absolutely banking on this Rex room. Okay, I'll I'll take that to the tier limit. What is he going to fuse with? Does he have an Aqua? Did I miss something? I probably missed something. He's going to fuse. Oh, he can fuse with into anything technically, so. He's going to go tier limit plus something else to go into. Oh, Drekus. Yeah, it's not bad. Now, the thing is, we don't have any more monster effects, so this is this is where it ends for us, but we have other stuff that we can do, so that's fine. And there can be only one Solemn Warning. Okay. Just go to end phase. We can always steal this Rexrum, and then he has a 2700 attack monster, and we have Rexrum, so that's not too bad. And if he tries to make more dinosaur stuff, then we have things that we can do, actually. He's going to place a Pride Plant counter on my card. There's never a reason not to do this. Because he doesn't know that I can't tag out. So there's never a reason not to activate that effect. But honestly, our follow-up's not even that bad. And our honest follow-up's not even that terrible. Now that I, I look at it. Because I can steal Rexrum and I can do more after I steal Rexrum. I can steal Rexrum. I have, there can be only one. So he's going to attack over this. I guess I can activate the Crackdown now. Yeah, I'll activate Crackdown and I'll take, take the Rexrum. Because why not? This card's not doing much of anything right now. This is... I mean, he's still going to be able to attack over our monster regardless. Quick effect. He's going to pay life points, but this is actually going to... This is fine. It's actually going to benefit me in a certain sense. Because he's going to put his life points at 500. 
He's going to drop his own life points, and he's going to beef my monster up. So, I'm just going to take less damage, so that's I, I guess that's kind of fine. So now he attacks over the Condemned Witch. I'm not even going to do anything about that. That's fine. And like, if I can get in... I don't know what else he's got in hand, but if I can get into a Time Thief, I win this duel. Because if... Yeah, if I can make a Time Thief with the Angel Statue, I just win. End phase. We're definitely going to activate an Angel Statue. Technically, I... It, it really depends on what this card is. But... Yeah, I, yeah, I think I, I had so many different routes to victory there, because even if he had the card that summons a dinosaur in the back row, I could just Solemn Warning that card, and then this, this is still good. Like, I, I could just attack with the Angel Statue, crash, pop his monster, and then just attack with my, with my other, with the, with the uh, Endymion in hand. Like, there was, there was so many routes to victory there. That, that, that was a very odd build of that deck. I don't even really know what was going on there. Two, no, no Legacy tickets. Rerun. And Hinoshinigan. So neither of those are really useful. Okay, this is our the hero deck that we played against. Again, this was guy. This guy was playing like Omni Heroes. It was crazy because he was looping this one copy of Favorite Contact every single turn, which is actually kind of impressive. And he was also looping the Favorite guy, this guy right here, the Elemental Hero Wingman guy. He was looping this card also, which is actually really impressive. This is a duel that we, I think we... I don't know if we could have won because realistically... I don't know how much we can do under our own Gozen match if we're... Like, I don't know how much we could have done. And we would have got the life points quite low, but I don't think it would have done enough. But we definitely should have popped the Anki, and then we could have gone from there with the with the Shark and stuff like that. But it, it's very unlikely that we would have won this duel regardless, but we would have kept it going a little bit longer. And this is the other deck that our opponent was playing. They were playing Tier Limit Dinomorphia. Again, I don't know how these people do this and not Brick. Like, this guy... All things considered, really actually drew kind of well, if you look back at it. It's just that we were playing such a dumb, weird deck that it countered his strategy actually quite perfectly. Like, if we were playing a normal, like, monster-heavy deck, we probably would have just lost, because this 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 Rex Room would have just stopped every every monster below 1,000 attack wouldn't have been able... Actually, every monster below 500 attack wouldn't have been able to do anything, because he could have paid half his life points again. Uh, with this effect. So realistically, we drew the one card in our deck that actually helped us. It was, not only was it 100 attack, but it also, him activating this quick effect actually made us gain attack, which is quite funny. So yeah, we just, we just got really lucky against this guy. We just countered him absolutely perfectly. Okay, let's open some Master Packs. One of the most exciting parts of the show. Uh, another pair of Master Packs. Beautiful. Beautiful. Always exciting to open these. Our pulls, like I said, the last few episodes, dog shit, but... We'll see if we get something. We already have that. Uh, I can't really fusion summon into any good zombies. Cyber Revolution. Get another one of those. Another one of those. Another one of those. Uh, that's new, but I don't think I can use it. Let's see what this is. Heretic Seal of Creation. Funny enough, that's a that's a duplicate. But we've been pulling a lot of Heretic. The first few months that we did this challenge, I want to say the first two months, we were pulling a Heretic, like two, three Heretics every episode. No joke. Every episode, we, I think we have most of the cards that are on screen right now. Like, we have most of this stuff. The problem is, Heratics are not a great deck. So, even if I had everything, it would still not be that great. But we don't have, like, the important stuff like Heratic Seal. But we, we have two copies of this, for example. It's This is all repeats except for these two, which is insane. We get a lot of repeats. Okay, let's open up another Master Pack. We'll see if this one's any better. Hopefully it is, but we shall see. The last one was glowing, so we get, did get a hollow last time. Constellar, normal summon, special summon Constellar from your hand. If we get enough Constellars, we could just straight up convert over to a Constellar deck. This isn't even bad. You normal summon this card, special Constellar from hand, and the Constellars. The newer stuff is actually quite decent, like this dude right here. But once we get enough of it, maybe we could just switch. This one gives 500 or something like that, right? Banish one, uh, target one banish card, return it to the graveyard. This isn't really relevant for us. Uh, the second effect is cool, but that first effect is useless. Plus, we have other Paleozoics that we don't even use. So, if we don't even use those Paleozoics, we probably won't use one that we really don't need. Rose Paladin. That card's not terrible for ninjas. Cleefort, Stealth. Divine Serpent, Gah. And Vampire Ghost. Okay, so... Like halfway. They're like okay pulls. Really, with situational cards, but not, not bad. The Constellar's pretty decent. All right, we lost the coin flip, but our hand's pretty good. Honestly, our hand is pretty good, so I can't really be mad. We have access to link f to rank fours or synchro fours, or, or synchro eights, I should say. But the, pff, which I I'm 
It would have been cool if we were, uh, if a monster set to your field. It would have been cool if we were able to set to his field. But we are not. Okay, so... I think we just set this, and then activate Penguin Squire, and then we go from there. So we'll set this. Yep, Penguin Squire. I don't know what our opponent's playing, but they obviously bricked. Change level, yes, by one. Activate this, flip this dude. And... Funny enough, we actually can summon the Tiamaton here. What does that really accomplish? What does that accomplish, summoning this Tiamaton? Yeah, I don't think it does anything for it. Like, what would we get from summoning Ti Tiamaton right now? Because I technically can. If I place uh, one of these cards here, technically I can. I guess, so. yeah, we do summon Tiamaton because he's not going to be useful either otherwise. So I guess what we'll do is this right here. We'll summon him here. And what this will do is block this zone, and then if we summon a monster here, then it'll block... If he's some playing a Link deck, we will essentially lock him out to a certain degree. So here are the options here. Oops, cancel. Here are the options. We can either go Dragite, like usual, like either Dragite or Fo Galaxy, but I won't know. Or I could attack, find out what deck he's playing, and then make it. But I, I actually think this is probably better. I think it's better, probably better to just do it now. So we'll summon him here. That way we block his zone. And then we go to battle phase. Well, we'll search first, and then we'll go to battle phase. Detach the water, and then we'll search for the Eternal Galaxy to hand. I think, just generally, I think the Galaxy is better than the Dragite going blind like this. But this way, we do a little bit of damage. Both of them are 2,000, so Ghost Bell, that wouldn't have given us any information anyway. So then we just attack directly. Main phase 2, set everything, and pass. We have Gozen. There can be only one. And that's pretty good. So now we put Chaining on. That's pretty good. And we have his Link monster locked out. If he's playing Links. We have that zone locked out. So if he happens to be playing like Fire King or something. He can't even go into like a Link 1. Plus we have there can be only one. And all this other stuff. So that's honestly a pretty good good situation for us. Hopefully he's not playing Cyber Dragon. That would be bad. You know we switch out. And we have protection from Solemn. Judgment, so we'll summon it here. Fingers crossed he's playing a Link deck, because then we have him in a really, really bad situation. This is a cool lock, actually. This is one of the cooler locks that we've done. Let me turn Chaining off so we don't get harassed by this every three seconds. He's going to activate Snatch Steel. I didn't see that coming, I'll be honest with you. Man. You know, it's funny, I think I have to actually Judgment that. I legitimately think I actually have to Judgment, because if he takes that, he can, like... I think I have to, yeah, I have to judgment that. I have no choice. I don't have any other, like, form of anything to deal with that. I actually have to judgment that. Because then I lose my monster negate. I lose my search. I lose my follow. I lose so much if I don't negate that. It's actually kind of crazy. I have to. So if he has, like, a Raigeki now, we, we only lose this, really. If he has Harpies, then we lose two cards. But it happens. It happens. Like, I, I couldn't afford to lose that card. That card is actually too important. Raigeki's fine. I, we lose one monster from Raigeki. That's actually completely fine. Because this can't be destroyed by card effects. We lose one monster and we lose our lockout. So if he is playing a Link deck, we lose that right now. But we still get to keep our our main monster here. End phase, cool. End phase is good with me. So now we activate this on the end phase. Yep, Photon. And with the Photon, we'll grab... Oh, he can Ash us, yeah, if he's got an Ash. I don't know what else he can have. He can have Imperm because his field is technically empty. So he could have Imperm. He could have Gamma. We can't be destroyed by card effect, and I could negate Gamma anyway, but... Would I even negate Gamma? I wouldn't even negate Gamma, because... Gamma would negate my effect, summon the two little guys... And then he can't be destroyed by card effect anyway, because I've got this as material. Max C, I'm not... I'm not special summoning. Uh, he, I don't know what he read, because I'm not special summoning. Nope, not negating that. Thank you, I'll keep my material. Max C, yep, we'll search Advancer. To hand, yep. I'll special summon it next turn. And then that's it. Yeah. Now he has 6,000. If I draw a big monster in Dimion, that's game. Wonderful. And I didn't even go into any of my floodgates, which is good. So we'll special summon that out. Inherent. Can't even max see us. Summon Endymion. Activate Endymion. And if I equip 2,500 man onto him. Well, not 25. It'll make him 23. But if we equip this, it makes him 23. And that's game. But he scooped anyway. 
Solid win. That was a beautiful board. Can I get some credit for that? That was a beautiful board. We misplayed once against the hero player, but that was a stunning board, and we ranked up. That board was like a Mac. It was like poetry. Wow, I really like that board. They were, I don't know what they, deck they were playing, but we're about to find out. Okay, this is what our opponent was playing. Oh my god, what the hell am I looking at? Tonight's decks have been nothing short of amazing. I love the people we're playing against today. Not because we're winning. Not only because we're winning. But it's actually been really... It's interesting to play against stuff that you just you just sit down and you're like, what the hell's my opponent playing? I, I don't know what this... What, I don't know what's going to happen next. Am I getting Floodgate? Am I losing to a going second card? I don't know what's going on. And then we've got Yada. Bro, I think every card in here is a UR. This is like a UR only challenge. What's going on here? Every This is the most expensive deck I've ever seen. Is every card a UR? No. No, it's not. Magical Mallet. Budget. So every other card is a UR. This is the most URs I've ever seen. It's a 60 card deck. This is legitimately... This guy spent... This guy spent thousands of gems to lose. I've never... It's pay to lose. I've never seen somebody pay to lose this badly. Everything is a UR. What is the goal of this deck? What is the goal? I, I don't know. Why does he have only three? Three of the Numeron pieces. Why does he have only three? What's going on here? It's, he has one Numeron network, one copy of Calling, three of these pieces. I guess this is to go into Soldier. You're playing one brick for three cards. This is insane. This is more insane than we are. Wow. Okay, let's go open some stuff. All right, let's open up this Master Pack. Wow, that was quite a win. That was an interesting deck, to say the least. That was very interesting. I actually kind of liked it. Tonight's been a fun night. Flower Dino, Morphtronic, DD, Armaduke. This card's not bad. This is, uh, well, in Centurion, it's good. In Centurion, it's good. How can I make this a continuous trap? I can't. I'd have to pull other Centurion cards that are really good. Send one face of Centurion card. Special summon this card. That's not a bad card. It's 3,000 defense, but again, I don't think I can really use that. And uh, nothing. Damn, this pack was glowing for nobody. This was... Wow, okay. Yeah. That was... That was... Wow, okay. This is a UR. What a beautiful way to see something here. A UR? I'll take that. I'm excited for this. Hopefully we get a good one. We've got Clock Tower Prison. Can't do anything. Oh, I accidentally clicked it. Too bad. Three hollows. Okay. Constellar and... Vanquish Soul Caesar. I think that might be usable, actually. Fire Formation, which we already have. Crawler. Is this generic? Nope. Two insects. If only we had an insect deck, right? If only we had an insect deck. But unfortunately, we pull a beautiful, amazing insect card every other episode. We look at our insect stuff and go, we're not quite there. We're not quite. We're getting there. Two level four light, light monsters. Listen, it's... We've been... like. What did I just say about Constellars? What did I just say about Constellars? This might be the route we... You know what's crazy? This card... This deck is good under Gozen Match. Like really good. And it's actually quite good under There Can Be Only One. Look at the typing on this. Warrior, Spellcaster, Beast, Beast Warrior. Look at what's going on. Four different types. Spell, four different things all in one deck. This actually might act legitimately fit our deck better than the stuff that we're playing right now. Which is great, actually. But we just need to pull more. I, I'll look at what we have afterwards. But what is this? this guy even have good effect? Okay, you know what's crazy? I'm reading this guy, and I just realized in the background, we already own him. So why am I even reading him? Because I'm an idiot. I shouldn't even be reading him. Let's see what the Vanquish Soul. During the main phase, you can target one Dragon Vanquish Soul. Return to the hand, special summon this card. We do play a Vanquish Soul, but we only have one. So here's the story. We got to check how many Vanquish Soul cards we have. This card is absolutely phenomenal. Like, it really is good. Because I, I played against him. Uh, quite a few times because Vanquish Soul was very, very much in the metagame for quite some time. It was one of the better decks, actually. It was probably like a top five deck for, I'd say like a three, four month period. But then you know, Snake Eye came out and it was over. And this guy, this guy's been sitting in a, in a bulk bin ever since. But it's not a bad deck because it takes two, three hits on, on some meta decks. And this, and this deck suddenly is back up there again. Uh, but this guy's very, very good. Destroy one other card, or it's unaffected. If you just reveal Earth, we have plenty of Earths. Earth, Fire, Dark, and then you can destroy one other card on the field. Non-targeting. So, it's a good card, but I gotta check how many Vanquish Soul cards we actually have. Okay, let's look at these real quick. So, we have to... What did I say? We have to check this. Actually, I forgot I pulled this guy, too. This guy is... How do you special summon? 
You can special summon. If you normal summon a rescue ace, how many? That's not bad though. 2200 if all you have to do is summon a rescue ace monster. Related cards. We've got this guy, which we can't summon. He's big as hell. This guy, which we also can't summon because you have to banish a rescue ace card. Big as hell. Then we have a bunch. We have every rescue ace spell trap card. Literally, if we ever pull this dude, Turbulence, we can set everything. We have more rescue ace spell trap cards than most rescue ace players. This is actually kind of crazy. And we have multiples. This is actually amazing. I didn't. I never realized this, but we have almost all of the rescue ace spell trap cards. Wow. Uh, too bad we need the high rarity cards. So that will probably never work out for us. We can leave that on the back burner. Uh, we've got what else? This is Super Heavy Samurai. Can't really do much with that. Constellar. Let's see. Related cards. How many Constellars do we... Wow. There's a lot of cards illuminated here, actually. Huh. We might be playing Constellars, guys. We might be playing Constellars. I've never played Constellars. i got to tell you that. Never played it. But this is a lot of cards. And we have this guy who's very good. We have this guy who's quite good. And then we have that other one. Normal Summon. Summon another one. We have that one. And then we have the other... Level 3 that converts himself to a level 4. I think it's this guy. Yeah, this guy. But actually, yeah. This might... We might be moving in this direction. I didn't realize we had this many. We are almost... We're missing... 1, 2, 3, 4 Constellars. We have everybody else. I gotta try this out in solo mode. You guys can... If you guys have played Constellars, you gotta tell me if this is worth playing. Because some of these old decks... Shockingly enough, our existing deck is better. I'm not saying that it's better than this, but like Bujins, if we had full power Bujins, I swear to you, I think our regular deck would actually beat full power Bujins. I don't know if this is one of those situations because we would just be playing some of the monsters, like replacing these monsters with these monsters, leaving these trap cards. And if this can more reliably summon out level four monsters, then maybe we switch to this. But this actually looks like it could, it, it looks plausible to be honest with you. And then we've got. What else did we pull that was amazing? Uh, I don't think Centurion. No, no, nothing. Related cards. Yeah, that's, this is too new of an archetype. We have this. We have Elma's Oath. Yeah, but we can't use it. But I didn't realize we had that. Uh, and then we have what was the last card that I put? Oh yeah, this the Caesar. Let's go to related cards. We have her. We've been using her, and we'd like to use more of her if we could. If I had three of this, I probably would. And then we've got Rosin, which we also can't, don't have. Uh, Mad Love. We also don't have her. And the heavy Borger we have, but I mean, Targon went non machine vanquish. So he, so the problem is we need the level fours and stuff like that. We need, yeah, we need the level fours in order to use the bigger monsters. We also don't have the rock vanisher. We, we're missing too many things out of this deck. This card's one of the best cards in the entire archetype. It's only a rare, but we do have that. But realistically, we need to pull more of like the Panther and stuff like that to even, even fathom using the caesar but it's not a bad card actually overall all right before we end this episode let's open the rest of these legacy tickets we pulled some good stuff today honestly like the last few episodes have just been embarrassingly bad but we pulled some interesting pieces especially for that constellar stuff that's like that's definitely worth worth considering buster rancher and perform pal we pulled so many random perform pals perform pals actually a lot of people don't realize this a lot of people say like oh dark magician blue eyes get a lot of support perform pal is by far the biggest archetype it's like perform pal salamangre it's like there's a lot of random archetypes that you wouldn't think have a lot of support when you actually break it down they have an outrageous amount of support grass chopper iron chain dragon if only we were playing edison this guy actually looks really weird if you zoom in on him but this card's not bad uh but he needs um yeah, he's not bad. Inflicts battle damage. Send the top three cards if everyone's like it's. This was just a card that you could go into in in because you could use him with. Uh, I forget the dragon, but he's like he's like a level four and he summons one back. I forget his name, but you could use it with him because he's actually a dragon. And the grass chopper is um, it's a Gemini, so there's no point to even read any further. Gemini's are the worst thing ever printed in Yu-Gi-Oh. They make no sense. Wow, this guy's actually pretty decent from what I remember. Let me read him real quick. Okay, this card's not bad for sealed situations, but he's a bit slow. He has to be destroyed by an opponent's card effect, and then I can set back a trap card, but that's that's assuming that we're staying on him. Like, he can maybe go in our control deck, but he's definitely a very slow card. And then this is a super... You gotta be kidding me. Kanan, the Sword Mistress. You gotta be kidding me with this Kanan thing. Super rare on this card. Why is this a super rare? Can somebody explain this to me? She's an ultra rare. 
funny enough, in real life, this card is actually an ultra. If I remember correctly, I think this is a prize card in Japan or something like that. I don't remember, but if I, it might be a prize card, but it is an ultra rare in real life. I think it's in like Joey's World or Yugi's World, one of those two sets. But that is kind of that's a re that's like you talk about a waste of a super rare. That could have been so. Let me. What is in this pack? That is a waste of a super rare. The super rares in this pack are actually good. Like the ultras are ass. A lot of the most of the ultras are ass. But the super rares in this pack are legitimately actually good cards. There's so many here that we could maybe actually get away with. But to pull that, that was that was actually horrific. Like, look at this stuff. We have Jinzo. Not that he's, like, amazing. But actually, King Tiger's really not bad. Against a lot of decks, he's really not bad. Uh, what else is good? We've got Spell Canceler. It's not bad. We've got all of the random Floodgates that are all really good. There's a lot of bats. Yeah, all of the barrier statues. Any one of these would be good. Especially like the light one because that's just out of meta. Earth, water. Disgusting right now. Random cards here that are really, really good. But obviously, you get lucky. You don't get lucky. The supers generally are better. No penguin was in here. He's another good card. But that was... That warrior... That was actually a shocking card to see there. La, 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 la.